is getting worse by the way. As you know, a very simple, this is, he was mentioning social security. There's no social security for people who haven't worked for a substantial period. So if you, you have not been in the so-called formal sector, social security is very, very poor or, or non-existent. There's no pension, no social security. Many of the people survive because at the end of the day, they have had accumulated savings. India is a country where just now, the last uh, one, a few months what's happening, let me tell you, share with you, the interest on fixed deposits in banks is coming down. So, a lot of people are investing in mutual funds, in shares to keep their income going. Imagine a man of eight, he can't be doing that. So elderly people in India are in crisis for economic reasons. Secondly, they are in crisis with their own children. Because if you have a house and you have two children, very often the elderly are kicked out of these homes forcefully by, the, by, the, by their own children and they have nowhere to go. So it is a sorry state. So another cause which Helpage India, Anuradha and the team, are doing a lot to combat wonderful work. Uh, I, you too have given such suggested some projects. So if you feel, you know, the call, because you, you, you need to feel that call, you can work with our brother and our team and make certain things happen. Of course, as she tells me every year, the scope of what we call entrepreneurship is rather limited because elderly people can't really contribute much to it. But Heritage India is a leading charity. I thought. You change your accent. So meet Omurada Sen of Heritage India. Okay, and this is my colleague Indrani Sen. And uh, working in an old age organization, we are also pretty old. Uh, I am working for the last 30 years. And Indrani, how many years are you working? 22 years. 22 years. So we are in the same organization, Helpage India, and as the name would suggest, that we help the aged people, and ours is the only organization that is working nationwide, only for the senior citizens. Now from where Durbar has left us, if I just make, you know, before I start the formal presentation, you saw the presentation on sex workers, and what did we see? We saw uh, collectives with women and the children of the sex workers. But what about the retired sex workers? Since they are workers, they are also retired. So have we seen anything about retired sex workers? Yes or no? No. So this is the reality. What happens is, when people become old, we tend to ignore them. There are so many organizations, even in the UN, there are the children organization, there are the development organization. Can you show me UN organization, and UN organization where they are thinking of the senior citizens? No. So this is our pain in our profession, in our work, in our mandate. We work for the senior citizen. And anywhere regarding entrepreneurship, as uh, Mr. Mitter had pointed out, that we need funds, we need money, we need entrepreneurship. But where is that fund? Whether it is international fund, domestic fund, if people are not thinking about it. Now there is another catch. If we have a myth that when people become old, they no longer contribute to the society. Which means they go under the welfare project of a government. And whenever we see them as a welfare domain, then suddenly the funds dry up, okay? whether international, national, domestic, nothing is there. So we have to break that myth in the first place that we can do something, senior citizens still can contribute and it is just not welfare but it is a development program with, where they can mainstream the senior citizens. So that is what Helpage is doing. Now if I talk about senior citizens, there are so many angles, there are so many uh, you know, levels that I can go on and on. So I have to pick and choose. Like you can talk about senior citizens in urban areas, in rural areas, people who are below poverty line, people who are rich.
marriage. So our marriage is fighting isolation, poverty and neglect. When we say isolation, it is among the rich senior citizen. Neglect is also among the rich senior citizen. Poverty is there in the rural areas. So today I will talk about people who are below poverty line and who are living in the rural areas of India. What we have done with them. Why I have chosen this? Because today's topic is entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship with senior citizens, with the elderly people is a difficult proposition. Uh, this time round, because I also have been coming every year, except probably last year there was some which I couldn't come. Uh, I come with presentations and slides and I show. Today I will show you a short film. How much time do I have? But it's a very short film, 15 minutes. Uh, this is done. It's short. <laughs> it's short for a feature film. Oh. And it's not a two minutes film. Uh, it takes some time. Uh, the thing is that they are also being done by interns. Maybe there are some spelling mistakes. You know, it is not professionally done. But we also have interns who come <laughs> and intern with uh, <coughs> India from various universities. Generally, their hometown is based in Calcutta, and that's why during their vacation they come and do the internship. But they are from all over India. The universities are from all over India. So one such group had come who were in the communications and they were sent to one of the district called Purulia and this is what they have captured. Entrepreneurship, what we can do, let me sum it up very uh, shortly uh, in a condensed manner, is that uh, we have formed self help groups. So the concept of self help group has always been there. But the concept of elder self help group was never there. As I said, the myth that when one becomes old, one cannot do anything. Cambridge India has divided uh, three groups, category of senior citizen, not by age. Technically, from 60 plus, one is a senior citizen. But we have divided according to their working ability. So the active uh, senior citizen, the assisted, by assisted I mean, you know, when one becomes old, uh, they have uh, cataract which they can't see. They think they are born blind and so they become dependent. So one cataract operation uh, which we do for free to these people, they get, get back their uh, eyesight and they can go back to their livelihoods, they become independent. So, so assisted is that we give them some form of assistance, whether a wheelchair, a, a smoking stick, a hearing aid, cataract operation and so on. And there are the destitute who are the 80 plus bedridden, totally alone, poverty stricken, there is nobody to see. So what we have done is with the active people and the assisted people, we have formed a reserve group and these people with the, and we give them of course uh, a principal amount of money to start with and uh, what we have said that it is conditional in the sense that those who are absolutely destitute, it is the responsibility of these groups in the community to look after the, uh, those destitute people who are, uh, who has no one. And this we call Elder for Elders. So I will show you this film which has been captured by the students. So just look, if it is not that good, just keep in mind that they are interns. And if we can have the lights off, I think we can. At home, established in 1978, works with and for disadvantaged elderly. It works in the following areas like elderly rights, elder care, and supporters. Helmage India supports the elderly in many parts of West Bengal and covers its program known as Elder Self Help Group Program. One of such places is Purulia. Purulia is a district located in West Bengal, is rich with culture and natural beauty. Helmage India supports the villagers by focusing on their program of Elder Self Help Group. We, with the support of Helpage, covered some of the villages and gained lots of experiences. We mainly focused on Morguma and Begumkodal village. People here have their group meetings once in a week and start it with a prayer song and here they keep records of the interlending of money done.
Every member of the crew brings a handful of rice and gathers it for the test tubes. They depend on their livelihood like goats, cows, pigs, etc. One of the most important occupation of the villagers is beer making. Every member of the family does this work together. They make almost 500 beeries every day. Some of the groups have their meeting only about their livelihood. They discuss how to improve their livelihood stock in a more better way. to give some knowledge to the villagers about how to maintain and improve their livelihood activities. like Ashwati, Parvati, Durga, etc. And the members of each group are very responsible and takes care of the needs of each member of the group. They maintain a strong unity among themselves. Here is a short interview with Kalpana Mahato, volunteer of Sitara Women Elder Self-Help Group about how they take care of their livelihood stock. The whole system is divided into three steps that is district level federation DLF under which village level federation VLF is present and the groups are under this VLF. 
One VLF consists of 10 groups. So I think uh, the picture says a 
thousand words. So what I would have done speaking to you over here, probably this would be more entrenched in your mind what you saw. So this is actually the collective that which is everywhere. So they are formed into groups. They go and there is an interface with the government people also there in the district level and the panchayat level. And uh, this is actually what they do. So with the seniors, as you heard that the elder for elder thing also came up over here. And it was mentioned that the UN principle. So as I was saying, the UN doesn't have any branch. Yes, not individually. But today we do recognize the problem of the senior citizens. And that's why two days, this is just for information. Uh, October 1st is the International Day of Older Person, uh, which is being observed by everyone worldwide, so it's an international day. And there's another day which will show uh, which will tell you the situation of the senior citizen is the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So that is on 15 June. So there's a lot of elder abuse too. So pre to prevent elder abuse also, it is always best to have elder abuse by the society, by the whole family. So the best way is to form them into groups. In the uh, urban areas, we have the Senior Citizen Association. But as Mr. Mita pointed out initially, they are from an organized sector. They have pensions and everything. But with these groups in the villages, they are not from an organized sector. So a livelihood, a collective livelihood will help them become financially and socially a very strong group. So thank you. And any questions? No? So uh, at the beginning you mentioned that there's like there's no real awareness or attention for the needs uh, and problems with elderly people. And, like I can imagine that makes it even harder to raise funds. So what is your strategy on raising funds? Uh, you see, we have we are trying to deal with this problem three with the elderly problem first. We recognize as they have health problems and for obvious reasons, financial problems after retirement and emotional problem because they are not in control anymore. So what we do is, whatever we are doing with you know, raising funds and making the international community aware of the problem of the senior citizen, in India we, we do move, we do advocacy with the government level. What has happened in West Bengal because of Helpage India acti activity and advocacy uh, specifically is they have got two these two dates into their calendar of events. So we have made the government aware of the problem of the senior citizens. There is a national policy also, but unfortunately it is still in the draft level. It has started since 1999, there was a revision in 2011, but still, till date it has not been implemented. But there are certain, like there is an elder self group in the police, and that is all over India. And we conduct seminars and awareness programs with the government people so that you know this is more valuable. That's all. Yes. Uh, we see that in holy places there are a lot of women and mostly widows are living there and just dying. So is your organization doing Sure. In fact, uh, there are two places in India. One is Vrindavan and one is Benares. So these two places are where, in fact, Bengali widows used to go because uh, they should become widow at a very young age. So let's not go into that social integrity. Uh, but the thing is, then they used to go to uh, Benares or Vrindavan. And we have been to uh, Vrindavan where our team in Lucknow is working with the Vrindavan widows. I myself recently visited that place more so because of communication because I am a Bengali who could communicate with the, you know, the Bengali widows there. What the government has done there in UP is that they have provided all sorts of facilities. They have provided an old age home and then they get their regular pensions, they get their food and there are a lot of charitable institutions who come to these homes and give them lunch you know, and uh, I, I would say a whole lot of things are done for them and even the government is aware. Is something done for the vocational training or something? Vocational training, uh, not really that way but when they came, they came with their own skill, own learning. So they go to the temples and they you know, make garlands. 
and that they sell. And inside the home, there is no vocational activity as such, but there are, you know, for their uh, entertainment and for their religious, uh, you know, uh, so that they can go somewhere and do their prayer. Temples are there. You know, so food, every, and they are allowed, they are free to follow their own activities. And if that involves, you know, everybody is doing something, but it is not a collective activity. Like you saw the groups over here, I think from there you are thinking that other sir, yes. those activities are... The same place I uh, usually went to Bengal, okay. so I see a lot of things, mostly Bengal, Bengali. Yes, that's what I said, yes, from okay. Bengal. Okay. And that has been, in fact, uh, this is not entrepreneurship, but since you raised the question, uh, the Bengal government has thought of you know, bringing back the Bengali videos in West Bengal. But the thing is, uh, then, uh, I was also consulted. I said, this is a free country. People are, look, the Bengal government has not asked them to go and stay there. So if they are free to move around anywhere, and if that's the place where they find the solace, not only that, there are so many charitable organizations working, and they are generally from a very low income group, that you know, it suits them to be in Vrindavan rather than over there. Thank you, Anuradha.